Professor Bailger, I think we made it. Oh my god. Is that the Temple of the Listicles? It is. The ancient ones who knew the sacricity. That's not a word. Who knew the sacred value of top tens, fifteens, and even fives. We've been studying them for years, but this might be our greatest discovery yet. The top ten two ways for beginners. <sighs> Professor Odin, the rumors were true. True? Yeah, true. <laughs> we made it. We are at the temple. Finally. And this is the first statue. Oh my god. But what do they mean? Betela Dion or Tatu? Seems like the people who made this didn't make up their minds. They weren't completely sure of who was the first person in this listicle. Well, obviously Bella Dion is an amazing monster whether you two-way them or not. And if you do two-way them, you get 5% more on their heal and a little bit of attack bar. Control. But I can understand them because Tatu now is super meta in GB12 speed teams and also in the new artifact dungeon. So this was a very wise civilization. It's just really strange that they couldn't make up their minds. Do you feel that? Yes. Did we just gain knowledge? Is that a stack that I feel? I feel like, like I could quantify it in a numerical value of one to five, but not necessarily more than five. Ever. Yes, less than five. Only less than five. Less than five. I can't believe it. We're looking in different directions. <laughs> yes. I can't believe it. This statue seems like it went underappreciated for a really long time, and it will continue to be because it is only number nine in this series of the temple. Exactly, but it's an extremely important monster back in the day to help players go through TOA hell. Right, this is Necro B12, and also some areas in Calderon. And heals. And heals. Really? <laughs> Vigor. Debatable. Debatable for new players. New players? Like, are they are they sure? Listicles are. He's really yeah. good. You can use it in DB12. You can use it in RTA. Every guild content. This all of this doesn't sound very beginner friendly, but if you get him, you'll use it. More power to you. Heal. Defense break. Anti crit. It survives nerfs. It's a monster that just stood the test of time. Put your devil mods on him, and you'll see. Three turns, four turns, go by his refast. Is that the monster that puts dots stunned and gains attack bar? I think it is. That's Thrain, 2 8, the Dark Grim Reaper. And the only thing that people didn't like about him back in the day was his base speed, which they frankly still won't be happy with if they 2 8 him. <laughs> It doesn't change anything, big spoiler, but... But you don't bring him for that. You, you don't have a Rika. He's amazing because of the non-hitting dots. Mm -hmm. I broke character on that, but I feel like it was an important thing to get across. <laughs> Good point. It's like, you don't proc Mihos in TOA with non-hitting dots. We're getting deeper into the temple now. That's the end of that thought. <laughs> <laughs> it is them. The Trickaroo. It's at this point that we'd like to remind you of the title. This is for beginners. So the beginners should just have this in the back of their minds. Yes, save every Inugami you get. Because when you're trying to make Trickaroo, we promise you you'll somehow be out of Inugamis and farm Garen for weeks. Long time, just like us in our expedition. Some people recommend you to go straight from GB12 to NB12, then go raids and then straight Trickaroo. So that's why it's here, I heard. Who rescued who? Now there's truly some wisdom to be gained from looking at this statue. Naomi, the Wind Marshal Cat, Second Awakened, is an astonishing case, able to land critical hits without crit rate. Without crit rate. I heard that there was an old summoner that used her massively. Of course. His, His name, name was, was Evan. Evan. <laughs> <laughs> that was not in the script. You, I'm so you, getting you down. You just wanted to drag me. <laughs> I heard he made some YouTube content that was bomb. Wow, what? Just gotta fix it. Thank you. She doesn't need crit rate. Yeah, That's she awesome. doesn't. She was probably put here by the Listicles because of her usage in GB12, which is known to be a very beginner-friendly area. She's made the Sigmaris fusion even more optional. And maybe someone else that's later on in this list contributed to that as well. Ah! Again? Another What's undead. Grim Reapers? Oh my god. They weren't here in the past, but they just recently arrived. I mean, a thousand years ago or something. However many years this is, this is, is. Been going on. Been going on. Saf, 
the Fire Grim Reaper Second Awakening. Now, what's funny about this is you'll notice that his inclusion would make Tatu's inclusion in your team almost necessary if you're going for a GB12 dot team. But the difference I heard from what the listicly said is that he can also be used in TOA together with his brother. So he has more places where new players can use him. And why is that? because he doubles the damage of every dot. Oh, did we forget to say that? Be very careful on your team and the opponent's team as well. Speaking of TOA, Spectra, the Fire Griffin, the fastest monster in Summoner's War. Mm, 126. <laughs> Base speed. He can be used not only in TOA, but in Dragon's B12. And why is that, you ask? Because he has AOE attack bar control, a speed debuff, and attack break all on his third skill. Why did you use your normal voice? Why you asking? <laughs> oh my god. It was under our noses the whole time. <sighs> Professor. Professor. Great work. Everyone will look back on this day and remember it is the day we, we got, got tenure. tenure.